Welcome to this video clip with Jim and Mari Stout, two of our members from Ascension who are both professional counsellors and are associated with the workshop, our counselling service at Ascension. And this, today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the stressors and anxieties that our teens are facing and their families. Um, so welcome Jim and Mari. Thank you. Thank you. So what are you seeing? What, what, are, what are you hearing? And as you talk with teens and their families, what are some of the things that are bubbling up at the moment? There's, um, there's a whole list. And I think just some that come to mind is there's a lot of loneliness uh, as teens who are used to spending a lot of time with their peers that are now away from them. Um, there's boredom. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, I think, being home alone with screens, well, off in their rooms with screens, not alone necessarily. There can be a lot more temptations. Um, also, the, you know, the, the seniors in, in high school or college or folks who are missing their proms or their, you know, their, their final sports season of their high school mm -hmm. careers or, or, you know, some of the big sort of memorable moments of middle school and high school. And that's really difficult. Yeah. Um, it really, uh, it, it, it can feel like it's the end of the world. I mean, it can really feel like it's an all encompassing massive loss that they'll never get back. Um, and I empathize with that. That's, that's, it's a really difficult thing to be in. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, there's a lot of teens who are very much following the news and, um, aware then of more of what's happening, certainly more than younger kids would be. Um, and however, there's also not necessarily the same amount of emotional stamina or um, experience as an adult has in terms of how to process that um, because it feels so intense. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think it really begs the question. So how are we to respond? I mean, how should they respond? How can we help one another in our families? Right. Yeah. Well, I think some of it, and maybe this goes without saying, but um, all of us with any transition even um, and any sort of struggle, we bring our baseline health into that. And so mm -hmm. this is just going to be different for different kids. And if a kid was already struggling, then they're going to bring that into this. And this is the same for us adults. <laughs> If already we're in a place of higher anxiety and struggling with that, this is only going to ramp that up, right? Mm -hmm. So um, some of it is just recognizing what kind of support will each of our youth need. And some might need more than others. Some might be able to on their own, create their own rhythms and schedule. And others might need the support of parents to help do that. Um, I think the the biggest thing is beginning to recognize that this is grief and and so maybe initially there was a sense of yeah we're off of school <laughs> and that felt really free and good and now fairly quickly it's settling into wait that means i can't see who and i can't do what and that comes with a lot of anger mm -hmm. um and then trying to problem solve around that to sort of get at the things we want and not being able to and, um, and it may for some have already hit that place of deep sadness, of yes. realizing all the things that they may be, probably will be, maybe already have missed out on. Mm -hmm. um, and so that grief is painful. Mm -hmm. and, and some of it is recognizing that when something is painful, then the pain is normal, right? The, the anger and the sadness that comes with that um, and the anxiety and the fear that come with that is actually normal. Right. And, and so um, the, while we wish that God would promise to keep all bad things from happening, he doesn't. And so this, even in our grief, it becomes a place of going to the good shepherd and, and getting to know him in the midst of that grief. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's a couple ways that we can respond as parents uh, and then some ways that we can encourage our kids to engage on their own. So as parents, I, I think this is an opportunity for us to maybe re-engage or sort of up the ante on our ability to, to engage our, our teens. So we're all stuck at home together. What does it mean to be intentional about that? Mm -hmm. So marking off the dinner hour maybe or, you know, or the lunch hour or something where we put screens away, the news goes off, the TVs go off, and we, we really... Uh, pay attention to each other and engage each other. You know, and for our teens, they're reading the news. They're talking about this. This is, you know, this is what's going on. So asking them how they're processing it, doing some of that processing together. Uh, I think there's ways that we can ask them, what's been hardest in this for you? You know, what do you miss the most? Um, mm -hmm. And I think it just, it gives us the opportunity to just be able to, um, to, to relate, to have a conversation, and to be present to our teens in ways that we're just not in our in our really rapid paced world right now. We actually don't have this opportunity in this way very often. So looking at it as a as a potential to kind of dive in a little bit more deeply, uh, I think is a huge benefit. Yeah, I like that. That's that's a nice uh, you know an interesting perspective because I think we we can almost get sucked into this vortex of like where you know, the sky is falling the world's coming to an end and it's just terrible 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 and yet i do think we will see some unexpected good outcomes and consequences right. because we are kind of forced to be together in close confines with our family uh in ways that you know we can avoid frankly um you know, I know when I was a teen, if I'd fallen out with my parents or was just climbing the walls, I'd get on my bike and I would go around to a friend's house and hang out, except we can't. So I, I wonder what we'll, looking back, what we'll see that may have been good from this too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, well, um, any, other, any other just pointers for teens or their parents in ways to respond that are healthy and that are life-giving? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think some of it in recognizing that we are whole people is also being attentive to what our bodies need. Mm -hmm. And particularly when we are grieving, our bodies have to process that. And so movement is actually really, really important right now. Um, I, exercise is actually by quite far the number one way to complete what's called the stress cycle. And, and so making sure that we're, we're getting that, um, looking at how our sleep might be disrupted and that there's ways that we can protect our sleep um, and bring, bring rhythms there. Um, it could be just getting, if someone is creative, uh, then using that writing and the painting and the creative music um, to process this. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, of course, we have so many psalms of lament, and we are not alone. God's mm -hmm. people for a millennia have cried out to him um, and said, this doesn't feel right, and we're welcome to do that. He invites that from us. Well, thank you both. Uh, these, uh, just to those who are watching, these video clips are just, we're just scratching the surface. It's just a beginning. And so we'd love for... <laughs> parents or teens to let us know what are your concerns, what are your questions, and you can use the contact form on our website to do that. And once we receive some of these, we'll, we'll see if we can have another conversation and see uh, what else we might be able to do as we're in this together, as we're, uh, we're not here with an answer sheet, but we are here to listen to one another and to share some good practices. Um, but I, I want to just close out this clip with a, a prayer from our prayer book. And this is a, just simp a very simple prayer for those we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us, especially our families, to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you both very much. Thanks, Jonathan.